Welcome back to Prions on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. In this video, we're going to discuss Kuru, which is a disease caused by eating the brains of someone with creutzfeldt jakob disease. As I just mentioned, in this video, we're going to be talking about a prion disease known as Kuru. Now, what we're going to see is Kuru has some uh, similarities to classical creutzfeldt jakob disease. In fact, it's hypothesized that Kuru actually originated from this disease, which is classical CJD, and we talked about that in the previous video. So Kuru, we're going to see a little bit of overlap with that, except for one major difference. Well, there's a couple, but the major, major difference that we're going to see is that creutzfeldt jakob disease, the classical form of this disease, arised because of an intrinsic misfolding of the prion protein. It does not require consumption or an extraneous source of the prion protein in its misfolded form or its aggregate. This is just something that happens intrinsically within a person. Okay? Kuru, on the other hand, requires an extraneous source of the misfolded prion protein. Okay? And before we go into actually how this was transmitted and how it arose, let's do a brief review on these prion proteins right here. Okay? This right here is the non-infectious form of the prion protein. Uh, this protein is typically designated PRPC. In fact, I can actually take these uh, pieces of nomenclature from the previous slide. Uh, PRPC, this is prion protein, and the C designates that this is the non-infectious form of the protein. Recall from the previous video that I mentioned that this form, if you were actually to consume this from the diet, uh, say from a cow or God forbid a person, uh, this form of the protein is susceptible to hydrolysis by proteolytic enzymes in the stomach and the small intestine. Additionally, the stomach acid will be able to denature this protein. Okay, so you would easily be able to degrade this. However, um, this protein can misfold, and it will misfold into something that looks like this. Remember that the PRPSC form of this, this is the infectious form of the prion, and notice that it actually has more beta strands than alpha helices. Uh, that's one defining characteristic of these proteins that misfold and then begin aggregating as shown over here. And remember that these uh, individual PRPSCs, these infectious prions, can stack very similar to the way I talked about in the introductory video, like these chairs. The healthy form of this protein, as shown right here, is like this fold-out chair. It doesn't stack on top of itself very well, so it's healthy and you don't need to worry about aggregation. But when this chair, when you fold it in on itself, notice I can stack multiple chairs on top of one another. And that's kind of how these prion proteins, when they misfold, this is kind of how they aggregate, as shown right there. The other thing to know is that really this infectious protein monomer right here, and especially the aggregates over here on the right, these are more resistant to uh, hydrolysis in the gastrointestinal tract. So we would say they're protease resistant, especially the aggregates over here. Okay, So I just wanted to remind you of that really before we go into um, how Kuru actually works. Now, before we go into the next slide where we go into the mechanism, I wanted to again remind you that Kuru uh, is going to be very similar to classical creutzfeldt jakob disease, really in the sense that it's going to involve the same protein, the same misfolding, except for the fact that this aggregate is going to have to come from an extraneous source, i.e. cannibalism. All right, so what would happen, and there's a tribe here in this... Uh, Oceanic country. It's in uh, right north of Australia. It's Papua New Guinea. There's some indigenous tribes of this island that uh, would end up consuming the brains of people who basically went crazy. Um, they had a lot of problems, particularly with movement, as we'll talk about, but they, in, an, in any case, went crazy. And these people believed that they were possessed by a spirit and so forth. And so when the affected individual died, the people would actually consume the brain of this individual. Now, as we've learned from the previous things on prions, the, uh, the, these uh, prions are highly concentrated in the brain. And so you have right here, here's the aggregate of the prions in the deceased person's brain. 
And so what's going to happen is the people are going to cannibalize that deceased person. They're going to eat that person. And they would eat the brain in an attempt to supposedly cleanse the spirit from that deceased person. And so whenever they consumed this aggregate of prion proteins, ultimately remember that prion aggregate is protease resistant. So it would go all through the digestive tract, ultimately be absorbed into their blood and wind up in the person's brain. So it's gonna initially be in the person's GI and then it's gonna travel in the blood to the person's brain where it can then enter into neurons in the brain and then propagate, it'll continue aggregating as shown right here in a chain reaction like fashion to the point that the person's gonna have a bunch of these prion protein aggregates as shown right here. Okay, so again, hopefully this lets you know or hopefully it elucidates to you well that this is really just a similar disease to classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease except for the fact that that prion aggregate must come from an external source. So before we go into the neurological deficits here and what happens, let's actually talk about what the origin of the disease actually was or hypothesized to be. Now let's hypothesize that originally someone on that island of Papua New Guinea and those tribes actually developed classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. They believed the person was possessed by a spirit, so when they died, they consumed the person's brain who had classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. And then all this stuff happened, the people would actually intake this aggregation of prion proteins, and they basically developed something similar. Now, in the context where this disease has been transferred to other people, it's called Kuru, but its ultimate origin was classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, okay? But when it arises due to the transmission from person to person by consumption of the person's brain, then it's termed Kuru. And there are slight differences between it. For example, Kuru mainly affects the cerebellum. This is the major part of the brain that's affected by this disease. And we know from previous videos that whenever you have all these prion aggregations like this, the brain becomes very susceptible to uh, th that part of the brain, those neurons are susceptible to apoptosis, mainly because uh, these proteins can insert themselves into membranes and disrupt calcium homeostasis. So they cause uh, major calcium influx, really excessive calcium influx into these neurons, and that will cause mitochondrial dysfunction and then ultimately apoptosis. Again, we can go into mechanisms on that and other things, but the whole point is they cause the neuron to essentially starve. It's so stressed that it'll eventually undergo apoptosis and then a bunch of cells will die as a result of these aggregates. And this is mainly clustered in the cerebellum, at least in the case of Kuru. And so what you can see here is a damaged cerebellum. This is actually a, 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 this is a frontal section of this. And what you can see here is that there's a bunch of black lesions right here, nasty looking lesions. And this is actually due to neurons dying in the cerebellum. Now, the effects of Kuru are twofold. Uh, the most notable things are that you have cerebellar ataxia. What this is, is because you have death of neurons in the cerebellum, remember the cerebellum is going to be involved in the coordination of movement. So what will happen is the people will be unable to coordinate their movement and they will ultimately become very weak as a result, but they also will not be able to walk and, and, and stand by themselves. Eventually they'll basically be bedridden. And so what this is going to cause is as you can imagine, physiological, but also neurological deficits. Now, these alone are not usually what kill the individual. What happens as a result later in the uh, progression of the disease, which is going to take pretty much less than a year to kill the person, they'll develop extreme sores and wounds all over their body. And actually, the cause of death really is not the neurological deficits. It's really an infection and pneumonia as a result of open sores and wounds. Considering also in Papua New Guinea when this was originated, they didn't have very good medical care in this area. So these people with these sores and wounds um, would have died of some secondary illness, not the, the Kuru itself. But unfortunately, just like classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, Kuru, there is no cure for, it's not reversible, and it will ultimately be fatal and the individual will die as a result of this. Okay, so again, this disease is very similar and has a lot of overlap with classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, but in the end, it's gonna be caused by consumption of that prion protein, those aggregates, uh, from a person's brain who was previously affected. And so what you can imagine is, like I said, the initial person affected had classical CJD, but the people ate him, 
and they developed Kuru, okay, which is really just the form of CJD that is present when you eat the person's brain. Okay? But those people died, and then the other people surviving ate their brains. And so you can see the Kuru would propagate throughout the population. Now, this was recognized as a health concern mainly by uh, countries in this area, such as Australia, and they began educating these people on the the nasty effects of actually consuming the people's brains and they actually got the people to more or less stop this and what's actually been shown is that the number of deaths due to coup has actually dropped astronomically in the past 10 years or so to the point where I believe uh, the deaths have only been one or zero. Um, they'll actually debate that number. But the point is, is they've drastically reduced the incidence of Kuru because they educated the people on not eating the brains. All right, so that's Kuru. As I mentioned, a disease caused by eating brains of someone who had classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. All right. Now, the initial person had this. The rest of them, generations of this disease, had Kuru. But the initial person did have classical CJD. And what we're going to see in the next video is that there's another form of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease called variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. This is the human form of mad cow disease. And this is going to be very, very similar uh, in essence to Kuru, except for the fact that now the culprit is the prion protein in cows. Uh, but what we'll see is it's going to be very similar. In any case, I hope you learned something in this video about Kuru. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.